board here. All right. Um, okay, this should be going. Okay, cool. All right. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Hank Strange. If you're watching this on YouTube, we are doing a special interview here with Daniel Clayton Luce of Henry Rifle. We're kind of like checking in on Henry Rifle. Daniel, what's up? Yeah. Um, staying under uh, quarantine still here. Oh, you are. Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we're doing this with Ammo Land News, so you guys can also read this article that I'm going to put up on Ammo Land News. It's kind of like a cooperation thing that we're doing here. Daniel, what part of the country are you in? So I'm actually out of Pittsburgh. You're in Pittsburgh. Uh, okay. Yeah. So you Companies got... out of New Jersey and Wisconsin, and I'm here in Pittsburgh. Okay. You guys still under lockdown orders? For the most part, yeah. Okay. Uh, people are starting to get out and about, and uh, as long as they're doing it safely, I don't see any issue. Right, right. So, f so that's probably uh, my first question to go to. How is Henry Rifle faring under this, this uh, COVID-19 crisis that we've all been dealing with in the country, and for that matter, for the world? And then you personally, man, how's, how's everything going? Yeah, so um, as far as the company goes... Um, because we have those two locations, I mean, New Jersey, specifically Bayonne, New Jersey, mm -hmm. um, if anybody's familiar with that location, um, I mean, that is right at the heart of, you know, kind of the epicenter of COVID-19 and where the most cases were and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, so that location specifically was, was really hit hard. And okay. as a result, um, it's been entirely closed down since... March twentieth. Oh wow! So um, so the so you does Henry Rifle have employees that have gotten sick? Um, no, we we have not had anybody that that got sick uh, before we made the decision to close that location down entirely, which was more of a preemptive mm -hmm. uh, measure. Mm -hmm. um, but before that, I mean, we were taking people's temperatures into, as they came into the building. Uh, once news on on COVID nineteen started breaking and everything like that, just trying to mm -hmm. do what we what we could to kind of, you know, keep the, keep the ship running, I guess. And then it, and then at some point, um, we pretty much just had to make the decision. I mean, there's 300 plus plus people in that facility. Um, yeah. so yeah, it's, yeah. there's no manufacturing or shipping or anything out of that. Um, but we're, uh, kind of targeting June 1st to, uh, to get back up and running okay. kind of progressing up to it. Yeah. Um, I think that was a good move, being that you guys are in a situation where it, it's that there's a serious effect. I know um, some people in other parts of the country where there's not as much effect uh, from COVID-19. They are up and operating. Most of them, um, I think uh, the administration declared firearms manufacturing as an essential business. Yeah. So that was a good thing. How's What's going on with the other facilities that you have to manufacture? Yeah, so I think um, I actually I think we could have stayed open potentially mm -hmm. as an essential business in New Jersey. Um, as far as I understand, it wasn't like a mandated thing that we had to shut down. Mm -hmm. um, but the other location in Rice Lake, Wisconsin, um, you know, much more rural area um, population is not anywhere near what Bayonne is like, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and that we've stayed open the entire time um limited capacity with with what we're doing out there mm -hmm. um but very much closer to normal operations i okay. mean we're probably talking about like you know we're running at like 90 percent there okay. um i mean we've done a lot of things to you know make sure everybody stays safe and stuff like that but um you know we've been fortunate that we do have that facility out there which is actually larger than our New Jersey facility, oh, okay. uh, to be able to keep keep things running. Does that other facility uh, manufacture the same exact things, or things are split, and therefore maybe there's certain items that you guys have that we're, you're kind of running low on supply with? Yeah, so it's um, they they make two different things. So I mean, I think at this point we're up to like 200 something different SKUs. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, our product line has grown so much, even in the past five years or whatever. Right. Um, and uh, if you want to look at it from a, a line by line as far as SKUs goes instead of volume, um, it's probably about a 50-50 split. Uh, okay. Wisconsin, you know, making the entire gun 
um, and then New Jersey making the entire gun. So okay. there are definitely things where um, that have slowed down a lot as a okay. result of New Jersey being down. Um, but with that said, we've also made some contingency plans. Um, so like the AR-7, I think most people have, have probably seen that, the, the little twenty two that breaks down into mm-hmm. the stock. Survival um, rifle. Yeah, 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 exactly. That, historically, that's been a New Jersey item. Oh, okay. Um, we're moving that to Wisconsin. Okay. Um, so that's, you know, a part of this whole plan. Um, and we're also making some contingency plans to move production for the H001 series, which is kind of like our our base model lever action 22. Mm-hmm. That and the Golden Boy um, to start maybe doing some pr- production for those out in Wisconsin as well. Okay. We don't know what, you know, we don't, we, we don't know with certainty what the future looks like out in uh, New Jersey right now. Okay, but you guys don't have plans to stop manufacturing at all in New Jersey once things go back to normal, or at least, uh, you know, normal where it's safe uh, for your employees, they had to come back to manufacturing. Your, your plans right now uh, lean right. in that direction, right? Yeah, it'll be it'll be going right back to uh, right back to what we were doing before. Okay, are you increasing hiring in Wisconsin? Um, I'm not sure if we've increased hiring out there. Um, I don't think we have. Okay. Uh, but we are, you know, I mean, we're we're talking about expansion out, out there and everything like that. There's more room. There's more room to grow. Um, so we'll see. Okay. So how does that relate to, um, believe it or not, during, during this crisis, sales have gone up. Yeah. Right? So um, I think the last time I, I looked, I think um, we, 7 million sales so far this year in the entire industry. Um, how does that relate to Henry Rifle? Are you guys doing well, better than normal, uh, worse than normal? How's it looking? Yeah, I mean, from what I can see, this is definitely a, a record-breaking term for you know firearm and ammunition sales. Mm-hmm. Um, we tend to, you know, Henry Repeating Arms, I don't think sees as much of the the volatility of the market that mm-hmm. maybe a lot of other companies in different sectors might see. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, it's it's. I guess it's a little bit more stable for us, mm-hmm. but whenever we see a spike, regardless of you know if it's a spike in AR-15 sales, for example, we'll probably see a bit of an uptick mm-hmm. just because getting you know people going into a gun store is, is kind of the the first part of that battle, yeah. and they be going in there for um, you know concealed carry, they might be a first time buyer looking for something. And then, you know, they look up and see a golden boy or something like that. And then, um, you know, they walk out of there with, with two firearms instead of the one they originally yeah. <laughs> Rising tides. I mean, you know, yeah. yeah, I think that's the interesting thing that I find about Henry, Henry repeating arms. And I was having a conversation with someone about this recently, right? You guys are not, you know, your typical black rifle, the AR-15s that, that sometimes people... There's just too many of them out there, or people are getting tired of them. Not you, you know. You don't manufacture handguns, which a lot of times in the sales is high. But you kind of have your own market. I don't know if it's a niche, but you kind of have your own market that the the folks that enjoy these guns and use them for practical purposes, hunting and stuff like that, or just for the fun of it, you know, to own something that looks good and it's a firearm at the same time. Those guys tend to be like a, a steady, committed. Uh, base right yeah and i think um i think it also extend. i mean you know there, there's no reason you can't have an ar-15 and uh you know 357 mag lever action mm-hmm. rifle i mean no. <laughs> no they're two very different things but yeah. um yeah some guys just have some guys just have one gun or two guns yeah you know but if you're gonna have more than that you i i, I would say that you want to have some kind of enjoyment um, you know, I I don't know how the breakdown is for your typical market, but for me, I enjoy Henry rifles for fun and to you know, showing off. You know, yeah, yeah. it's easy. No, it's it easy definitely to show. Off. when you when you go to the range. Um, back when I lived in uh, New York for a while, um, would go to the range with you know a Henry Big Boy or something, mm-hmm. and 
pull that thing out of the case and everybody's gonna look and everybody's yeah there you yeah, go yeah yeah I'll pull one out right now. get yeah. behind that and, and try it out yeah um but yeah so there's definitely yeah. the fun element to it mm -hmm. um you know there's the there's the looks element um right we pride ourselves in and making pretty good looking firearms from a design standpoint mm -hmm. uh, but I think increasingly we're also getting into um, some more practical things on the on the hunting side, um, even the home defense side. Now you could argue um, mm -hmm. now that we put a, a side loading gate to some of our models, threaded barrels, that mm -hmm. type of. Thing. Okay, yeah. Is that what we're? Um, so what would you consider in that line? So I'm just pulling up some props here because honestly, when I'm when I'm live doing this, I can't show guns. Yeah. So I'm going to show off a little bit because we're not doing this live. All right. So therefore, we can have some guns. <laughs> you yeah, know, so this is the axe right yeah. here. So, um, so other than the axe, I don't know, the, is the axe in that category, would you say? So that's kind of a perfect example of that blend between fun and practicality. Mm -hmm. I mean, you take that form factor, and it's a 410, so it's not going to, you know, knock your socks off. Mm -hmm. uh, um, so, you know, it's a lot of fun to shoot. Mm-hmm. First and foremost, but there's also a practicality to having something yeah. small, but you know, bigger than a handgun. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a truck gun. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of a new category that's come up. If anyone hasn't seen these, it, it's not. Um, it's not an SBR. It's not even an AOW. This is something that you could just buy with the uh, one uh, Nix check. Yep. And, and you can have a smaller form factor. And uh, there's lots of options with 410, right? Um, uh, and, and I did do a video on this. The only thing is, I think you can't you, you can't use the three inch. Uh, you can't use the three yeah, inches. Yeah. So that yeah, one, I found uh, that out the hard way, Daniel. Because uh, okay, I didn't yeah. read the instructions. <laughs> yeah, this is yeah. why you read the instructions. <laughs> but yes, I think it says it on the barrel too. So yeah, it does. All the yeah. reading. I just... felt so stupid. I was like, and I knew it too. I read it, but I bought. You have to be careful when you when you buy your 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 rounds, right? Like. I, I bought a bunch of uh, what is it like two two and three quarters or something like that, mm -hmm. um, but somehow three inches got in there, mm. and then we're sitting there like what is happening? <laughs> well, you tried. <laughs> yes, uh, I included yeah. that as a message to the folks out there of you know make sure that you read the instructions. So yeah, and that's just you know doing doing a a three inch mm -hmm. uh, in a lever action would also lead people to trying two and three quarters mm -hmm. and and two inch mm -hmm. and make a lever action work with that much variance in the size of the uh, of the shell would just would be would be hard yeah yeah it just wouldn't work for the form factor I think it's a great gun yeah. so you guys so what else would fall into that category that you guys are making or or is this stuff that's upcoming um, no so we have the X models mm -hmm. as well. Uh, mm -hmm. That was a big release for us this year, mm -hmm. something we came out with back in January, announced it at SHOT Show, um, even though we didn't have a booth out there. Okay. Uh, we just kind of snuck it out there. Um, I'll, I'll know, try I, to throw up the site real quick here while we're talking. So the yeah. X models here on the site, it looks like you have a lever action X model, 4570, big boy X, and, uh, and the 410 shotgun, right? Yep, exactly. So there were five different models that came out of that release. Mm -hmm. um, and that one really, you know, we started last year, I guess, with the uh, H024, which we called appropriately the side gate lever action. Mm -hmm. That was the first rifle that we put a side loading gate on. Mm -hmm. And then we came out with this, um, the X models, uh, you know, with synthetic furniture, um, mm -hmm. M lock slots on the on the four stock Picatinny rail fiber optics, mm -hmm. a little bit uh, more accessories. Yeah, maybe kissing a little bit the black rifle, but 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 still not in that in that territory, right? Just a little bit more uh, practical, I would I guess I could say. Yeah, practical or just um, anybody you know that likes the look of it. Um, you know, you can throw a flashlight on there and. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, then then you have a pretty solid option that you could take out um, for deer or hog or whatever. Mm -hmm. But all you use is uh, you know a home defense or a backup rifle or something like that. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, I think because you don't, to me, because you don't have the the brass or the really nice wood furniture on there, it's something you could toss around a little bit more. Sure. Yeah. You, know, you, you can we, get we it hear, in the dirt. We hear a lot uh, from people that you know that they, they get a a brass thirty thirty or something, and they don't want to take it out in the woods. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we encourage everybody to take those out in the woods, but you know, I understand the 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 sentiment there so this one yeah it's a little bit more practical a little bit more utilitarian and uh yeah yeah L listen trust me uh, so on my range when i shoot videos i've got these rusty barrels and anytime i put like some nice wood furniture or breath people are like what's wrong with you yeah, yeah to me i think these guns can handle it <laughs> Yeah, no, they, yeah. They, they can. I mean, the yeah. the first uh, the first rifle I got when I started working uh, with Henry um, was the Big Boy forty four Magnum. Mm -hmm. um, I don't keep it polished. I just okay. you know, let the thing kind of patina. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, it can. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Yeah. No. So I, I completely forgot to check in on this in the beginning. Oh, what's your what's your standing over at Henry Rifle these days? What's your job title over there? Uh, you know, I'm the communications director. Communications director. Okay. Okay. And if people look at my videos, usually at NRA, you'll see you'll see Daniel in a video. Um, you guys don't necessarily do shot show. I know you do attend the shot show, but you you don't have a booth there, right? Yeah, we don't have a booth. Um, I think we've had a booth maybe like one or two years mm -hmm. um, in the past, but that was mm -hmm. maybe a decade ago or okay. more. Um, okay. You know, I know uh, the president of our company, Anthony Imperato. He, you know, he's told me stories about his his first shot show as Henry repeating arms, and it was basically just you know a six foot folding table with the uh -huh. uh, with the with the classic lever action twenty two on it, and that was. That was that. Um, yeah, uh, that sounds like the '80s or something, maybe. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> we're um, we're looking at potentially getting more involved in Shot mm -hmm. Show. We went to um, myself and and our vice president, general manager, and product manager. We were out at uh, the media day mm -hmm. um, this past year, mm -hmm. and we were out there with Federal Premium because we were kind of announcing a new new line of ammunition that we partnered up with them on okay hammer down and um we were we had a good time i mean you know met a lot of great people um and it's uh there's something amusing and really fun about being on a shooting line um you know with a bunch of full auto and you know press and stuff like that <laughs> here linking with with 22s and 357s and and, and things like that um yeah yeah, I mean, you've been to uh, Iraq Veteran 88, mm -hmm. 88 range days in the past, and it's mm -hmm. it's kind of the same thing. Yeah, you come there with, you know, it almost feels like like prehistoric technology. Yeah, but it's still it. fun. It's it's always it's interesting to me. It's interesting to me to see how much fun people have. So I think yeah. if people don't, if you've never had a lever action or you've never handled one. Um, if you if you have a chance, like if you have a friend or something, get in there and you'll see because I think it makes a big difference for you to actually do it. I hear that from people all the time, uh, specifically in regards to Henry, right? Because if it's something that you're just seeing, you're seeing in YouTube videos, but you don't really know, you you it's hard to quantify the quality, the feel, and all that kind of stuff, and then just really how much fun it is to use it. So I recommend if you can get into it you know if, if it's something that you don't know about so uh who thought shot show was going to be the last show of the year man that's usually the first show i know, I know. Yeah. yeah so and then we all missed out from nra for lots of different reasons but mostly because of covid19 w did you guys have plans of bringing out new stuff at shot at uh, nra we we didn't have plans to um announce anything new there specifically we did last year that's where we announced the side gate um mm -hmm. we were thinking about it uh for this year mm -hmm. um and then you know the, those every timeline you can imagine just got pushed back as, mm -hmm. as a result of this i mean mm -hmm. supply chains and you know prototyping and mm -hmm. it, it, it's all just uh it's all pushed back i mean we did have big plans for that show mm -hmm. um anything that we can get like you know we can get well, some we, clues on, we can hear about, maybe some whispers. Yeah, I mean, maybe not necessarily product related, but mm -hmm. 
uh, our our company president always does a presentation the mm-hmm. night before the show starts mm-hmm. and presents rifles to uh, to to people. And um, we had some really really good uh, guests that we were going to have um, this year, and it's unfortunate we couldn't make it happen. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, one of the guys in particular, uh, his name's Ray Lambert. He's down in North Carolina, and he's he was a combat medic uh, in the first wave of D-Day. Wow. Uh, wow. He's got a book out there and stuff like that. I mean, you know, you talk to these guys, and, and you know, I talked to them a lot back and forth just to figure out travel plans, and, mm-hmm. you know, we were all really excited, and, uh, you know, unfortunately, we couldn't make it happen. Yeah. Hopefully it will happen again. Um, I'm not sure h- how everything looks right now. Who knows? And if we wind up getting another cycle of this coming through towards the end of the... Because everything looks like it's pushed down to the end of the year or next year, depending mm-hmm. on what happens. Because um, the end of the year is flu season. Yeah. Right. And so we have, you know, we have a couple things on the schedule before the end of this year too Mm -hmm. i mean we've already had since nra show we've had some events get canceled but um in august we have the henry 180 Mm -hmm. uh which is a it's a nascar xfinity series race Mm -hmm. you know with title sponsor the race it's out at road america wisconsin it's kind of our home track right um and we we don't know exactly what's going on there either i think Um, you guys have like a golden car or something like i'm gonna see if i can pull it up on my that's what the race yeah. car looks like still, right? That's the livery, yeah, we, the Henry no, livery? No, it's not what it looks like still. That's what it did oh. last year. Um, oh, okay, so that's changed. It changes to the livery for this year, and we have not released that design yet. Um, uh, but it's done. We're just kind of waiting on... Okay. Essentially, we're waiting for the date of the race to get confirmed, mm-hmm. uh, and then we will we'll release the the uh, design of the car and everything like that. But, okay, uh, okay. They're fun. I, I mean, I, lo- I love... I love racing. I love cars. I love motorsports. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's a really, it's a particularly fun uh, combination to combination to work on. Yeah, I've got to come check out uh, the, you know. Yeah, we got to get you out there. Yeah, it's an off awesome track. Um, yeah. it's fun. We should yeah. do that. Awesome. Let's talk about some of the other activities uh, that you guys are getting involved in, right? Um, I know there was a charitable thing that you guys did. I think for um, some kids that have cancer. Yeah. yeah. Yes. That was that was pretty recent. Um, and that was uh, two kids. Uh, one was from Texas. Um, mm-hmm. I believe they were age three and four, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. Um, and essentially, uh, our company president donated. Uh, it looks like 120 guns or something like that. Yeah, 100, at this. 120 yeah. guns. Mm-hmm. Uh, Maybe it was 125, something like that. But these were custom rifles. We did a, you know, design on the buttstock and everything like that, and mm-hmm. uh, sold them directly mm-hmm. to the website. Mm-hmm. And, uh, all of that money went to the two families to help these, uh, help with the, you know, medical expenses associated with. Um, yeah. With cancer. Yeah, it's sad to see that happening to kids, especially. Um, but it's great to see that you guys, you, you guys are always doing things like that, and. Uh, helping out lots of different organizations and and I'm sure there's people out there that appreciate it. Um, I also saw that it was like kind of like the anniversary four years ago we did the thousand man shoot man. Yeah that was uh, (laughs) that was a wild one. We actually posted something um, you know we recently added a blog to our website Mm -hmm. uh, basically just gave me gave me an outlet that uh that I'm having some fun with. Yeah, I'm uh, gonna th- I'll throw that up here on the screen also for people who want to see. Really nice video. I think it's about 28 minutes. Yeah, and and it you're, brought you're, back memories you're all for that video too. Um, that <laughs> all, was uh, all the guys. All was, the guys. Uh, yeah, that was a fun event. Yeah, it was cool to see everyone that was out there and how much fun we were having and and uh, to know that I was part of history, you know. And uh, I will personally, I didn't bring in my uh, my Golden Boy 22, but I have it. Yep, uh, yeah. the Thousand Man Shoot edition. So yeah, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. About, I I talk to guys who brag like they still have their number that they had on. That, oh yeah, yeah, oh, all yeah. that stuff. Yeah, they brag about their, that. I can't remember right now what my number was, but I have it all. Yeah, I mean, it was yeah. um, it was a cool thing to that recent post I was talking about. It was just mm-hmm. kind of cool to look back at that. 
mm-hmm. let's see how many people came out for that and uh from all over i mean mm-hmm. they came from all over mm-hmm. and um that was the biggest shooting line i've ever seen for sure yeah uh, any chance of henry doing something like this bigger than this um some kind of event some point in the future here i think america needs something like this yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we don't have any specific plans yet, mm-hmm. um, but we do want to do something similar, uh, similar but bigger. Okay. Uh, basically, make the, you know, the thousand man um, shoot part of it, just like one one part of it. Um, okay. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Um, and I think you have. I think if folks go on the site, they can sign up to be notified of that, right? So. If, yeah. if they want to know when it's coming around. I recommend to do that. I know lots of people uh, were kind of, you know, upset that they missed the Thousand Man shoot. Um, so if you want to stay notified, I would say uh, go get on that email list specifically for that. Yeah, we um, we had a lot of people signing up. And obviously, mm-hmm. you know, only had only had a thousand spots. So yeah. we yeah. want to try and figure out the way to make the next one bigger. Yeah. There are not too many places in the country that... No, I know. <laughs> More than a thousand shooters. Though, yeah, so. I know. You you barely got that one in. Um, another yeah. thing I want to talk to you here to talk to you about here is I also saw that I guess there was kind of like a letter that Anthony put out. Um, now is time to buy American made, mm-hmm. and uh, you know uh, supporting American manufacturers is now more important than ever. Um, do you want to just touch on that a little bit? I don't think you guys were just talking about. Um, you know about buying guns or or Henry rifles. I th- I thought you know you were talking about supporting Made in America. Period. Especially with uh, stimulus money that's going out there to help people get people back to shopping and keep companies in in business. Right. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we we you know the the overall message hopefully was you know not go out and and buy a Henry. Although you know obviously we love that. Um, it's just I mean it's exactly like you said. You know when, when you're um especially at this time when there's so many businesses and, and manufacturers and companies all across the country, um, you know, that have made it a goal of theirs to keep all of their production done in the Mm -hmm. States. Mm -hmm. Um, we just feel that it's a super crucial time to, to support that, um, Mm -hmm. to support that decision. Yeah. Uh, Absolutely. I mean, even I would go further and say, like, when you go back out there and you're able to sit down in a restaurant and you're giving a tip, give a little bit extra for those folks that are serving you. Um, If you're able to get a haircut or go to the beauty salon, get your nails done. I know that's stuff that people haven't been able to do a lot. But, you know, these are people that if we if we keep going in this direction, they wouldn't necessarily have a job, but they help do those little extra things that make us feel good about ourselves. Right. Yeah. So I actually used to work in the hospitality industry. I mean, that's what I did before I got into this. I went mm-hmm. to culinary school and everything like that. And mm-hmm. that's, that's an industry in particular that, um, is really struggling. Mm-hmm. Um, like you said, you know, any chance you get to support them, whether it's, you know, buying a, you know, gift certificate for later on down the road, once mm-hmm. things do start opening up, um, I think it's a good thing to do. And, you know, obviously it's with all of this happening, um, there are economic implications um not everybody was able to keep their job through all this um and it's uh so it's tough um for sure but uh you know we just wanted to get out there with that message that um we feel it's important to to support the manufacturers that are keeping everything here and and everybody will see this thing through yeah absolutely absolutely and hopefully this helps to get more stuff made here in America after this, you know, as we go forward, we yep. think about that, think about manufacturing um, here more. How How is Anthony doing? I guess that, that's probably my, should have been my, maybe my first question, but I'll, I'll put it as the last one. How's he doing? Yeah, he's, he's doing good. I think, um, I think there was a little bit there where he may have, may have gotten out of the, uh, you know, the New York, New Jersey area, um, just to, you know, kind of seek shelter and yeah, make a run for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, no, he, otherwise he's, he's doing good. He's obvious, you know, we're all just chomping at the bit to, mm-hmm. to get back to normal and, mm-hmm. and 
kick this thing off. So yeah, as a whole, you know, um, this is going to sound weird, right? Because in the industry, we see each other all the time. We're always doing events and stuff like that. I never thought I was going to get to this point where I actually miss the dudes in the industry. You know, because yeah, know. we're always seeing each other. <laughs> yeah. But now yeah. I'm like, man, this feels weird to not actually like get out and talk to some of these guys and hang out and you know see what's going on. That's why I wanted to try to do some of these kind of interviews and get that out there for folks to know that you know this put it like a human face on what's going on. Yeah, I mean everybody's everybody's still out there and everybody's trying to do their thing uh, as best they can from from wherever they are. I mean I. You know, obviously, I work remotely anyway because um, I'm not in New Jersey or Wisconsin, but mm -hmm. I haven't been able to travel to either of those places mm -hmm. uh, since all this happened, which is which is unusual. Yeah, it's going to be been a lot of this video meetings and yeah, yeah, yeah. If if um, when this thing opens, man, there's going to be some serious partying going on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes. you're not kidding. Yeah, I'm, I'm right by a university, and I <laughs> I guarantee. As soon as you know some regulations get lifted, it's it's going to get a lot louder around here. Yep, yep. We've already, we're already seeing it in some states where they uh, where they went to court to get to get back in the bars, and yep. oh man, <laughs> yep. You know it was yep. on, it was on. So listen, man, I, w I really want to thank you, Daniel, for joining us here. I don't know if you have any final words or anything you want to impart to the audience out there before before we get out of here. But on, on my behalf, as well as Ammo Land News, I really want to thank you guys for coming on. And, and bringing us up to date with what's going on with oh, Henry. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate the opportunity. Definitely thanks for having me. Hope everybody out there is staying safe and healthy as possible. And, uh, you know, hopefully the light at the end of the tunnel is, is not too far away and we'll get back to normal here soon. Absolutely. Awesome. So thanks so much, uh, Daniel. Shout out to everyone at Henry Rifle. Um, we will see you guys soon. Thanks everyone out there. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell so you can be notified every time we go live. As well as check me out on Ammo Land News. Throwing up articles, man. You know, Hank Strange, writer. That's who would have thunk it. <laughs> All right, Daniel. See ya. Thank you.